Hi, this is Karthik. I welcome you all for this session. In this session, I'm going to teach you introduction to cascading style sheet. Once again, I repeat the topic: introduction to cascading style sheet. First, we'll see the objectives. Introduction to cascading style sheet (CSS). CSS definitions. Advantages of CSS. CSS terminologies. CSS commands. How to define a CSS. Embedded and inline style sheet. Internal and external style sheets. So these are the objectives we are going to discuss in this session. First, we'll see the definition for CSS. What is CSS? CSS stands for cascading style sheets. Once again, I repeat, CSS stands for cascading style sheets. So, what is the style? Okay, here is the definition. Style defines how to display HTML elements. Okay, what is the style? Defines how to display HTML elements. And styles are normally stored in style sheets. So, where these styles will be stored? Yeah, here is the answer. Styles are normally stored in style sheet. So, cascading style sheets. So, enables you to define how type is displayed on your web page. So, using CSS, you can able to define how your web page should be. The term cascading refers to ordered sequence of style. Right? What is a cascading? Cascading is nothing but a ordered sequence of style. What is a style? A style is a group of formatting attributes. So, what is a style? A style is a group of formatting attributes identified by a single name. So, how the style can be identified? So, style can be identified by a single name. Once again, I repeat, what is a style? A style is a group of formatting attributes. So, how the style can be identified? Identified by a single name. Next. A style in HTML documents gives you a great deal of control over text formatting. So what style in HTML gives you? The styles in HTML document gives you a great deal of control. So you can have the control over your web pages and over text formatting. To control the appearance of a website by creating a style sheet, we can able to control the appearance of a website how by creating a style sheet so cascading style sheets or a method of web design that format a web page content according to a presentation style specified by the web page author so what is a cascading style sheets CSS or a methods of web design so what is it it's nothing but the method of a web design that formats web page content so if you want to format the web page content here is the answer you want to use cascading style sheet so how according to the presentation style so who is going to uh, define this presentation style the web page author is going to define the presentation style so there are several advantage of using CSS to format the presentation element of a web page so what is that once again I repeat there are several advantage to use or using CSS to format the presentation element of a web page so CSS essentially separate the document content from the manner in which it is presented so what CSS will do the CSS will separate the text content and the style in which it is presented thus allowing for more fluid transition between the various web browsers so we used to say as browser compatibility so where we are going to run this web page on a different kinds of web browser so how to control this here is a key answer only thing using CSS you can able to go for browser compatibility CSS also provide more precious control over spacing alignment and positioning of content without relying on the need of layer tables or frames so how to control the spacing and position of an element or a content is a simple CSS will do this font style colors font size can be 
manipulated using CSS as well. So now we are going to see the definition for CSS. Cascading style sheet is a rule based language. What is it? It's a rule based language that applies styles for your HTML elements. Once again I repeat, CSS is a rule based language that applies styling to your HTML elements. You write CSS rule in elements and modify properties of those elements such as color, background color, width, border, thicknesses, font size, etc. So what is the CSS as a rules based language that applies styles on HTML elements as well as you can able to control the properties of an HTML element. So what is the advantage of style sheet? Saves time because we are going to write the cascading style sheet separately which is going to save the time and the same cascading style sheet can be used for different web pages. Easy to change. Whenever you need changes, if you do the changes in style sheet which will reflect in all the web pages, keep consistency, give more control over your layout because we are writing CSS which have the browser compatibility where we can able to control our look and feel. Use styles with JavaScript and HTML. We can able to use these styles with JavaScript or HTML. Make it easy to create a common format for all web pages. As you said, the cascading style sheet is going to have a central control over the, all the web pages. Whenever there is a change in this style sheet, which will reflect on multiple web pages. So, introduction to cascading style sheet. So, CSS syntax is made up of five part now we are entering into CSS the CSS syntax or semantics is made up of five parts what are they first one is a selector property value declaration declaration blocks curly braces once again I repeat CSS syntax is made up of five parts namely selector property value declaration declaration block curly braces so the CSS syntax is made up of five parts where we can able to see in diagram. So this one is called the selector. So we can select this selector. When we select this selector, the corresponding format or corresponding styles will be applied. And next comes your declaration. This entire part. This entire part is called as declaration where it consists of property and value the color is a property the number is a value and this is also a declaration and this entire thing put together is called as declaration block so and these are curly braces so this is a way you can able to define a CSS first start by the selector and then curly braces and then comes your declaration property what property you are going to use color and then corresponding value semicolon and corresponding value sorry colon corresponding value after completing this you want to use semicolon then going for next declaration font size is a property colon and then you want to give the value is x large and you want to close it using semicolon and then after doing all the changes you want to close the syntax by using curly braces. Once again, we see one more example. It's a rule. The syntax of CSS is made up of five parts. One is a selector and declaration. See, this entire block is called the declaration, where a declaration consists of property and value. And this is also one more declaration where it consists of property and value. This entire thing is called as a declaration block and this is called as curly braces opening and closing curly braces so now we are going to see the definition for selector so what is a selector so what a selector will do identifies the HTML elements that the rule will be applied to identified by the actual element name example body or by means such as class attribute values so what is a selector so identify the HTML elements so the selector are used to identify the HTML elements that the rule will be applied to 
which rule we are going to apply to whom you are going to apply to which attribute you are going to apply will be decided based on the selector identify by the actual name or element name example body you can use html element as a selector or you can use some other name such as class id or identifier or attributes and values so here is the example the selector is normally the html element you want to write this style for example now i want to redefine the style of h1 h1 is an html tag now i'm going to redefine the style for h1 how first h1 is a selector then followed by the curly braces opening curly braces then comes your declaration block which consists of property color then you use semicolon value blue and after completing this use semicolon then followed by next property font size colon and followed by the value and you want to close uh, you want to use semicolon it means that the property value has been end and then you want to close the syntax by using curly braces so a selector can be how many types of selectors are there is there is any rule to use anything as selector here is the answer the grouping of elements the selector can be either a grouping of element an identifier a class a single XHTML element such as body div etc etc blah 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 once again I repeat the selector can either be a grouping of elements an identifier a class a single XHTML element oh, like body div etc etc now we'll see one by one the selector the selector syntax you can use a selector or element then followed by the opening curly braces then property colon value semicolon then closing curly braces so this is called the syntax for defining a selector once again i repeat selector or element followed by opening curly braces then comes your property colon you want to give the corresponding value after giving the value you want to close it by using semicolon if you have any other property here you can start with or else you just close the syntax by curly braces so the type element selector so first now we are going to use an element as selector specify the style for a single x HTML element so if you use an element HTML element so specify what it will do specify the style for a single HTML document or HTML document right if you can use the HTML element as a selector so the styles will be applied only to the corresponding element for example I'm going to use the body tag so I'm going to open the curly braces then comes the property margin I'm going to set the value 0 and close it and I'm going for next property value padding 0 next property value border top 1px solid and I'm going to give some value and I'm going to close this body selector by using curly braces closing curly braces so grouping elements allows you to specify a single style for multiple elements at one time if you want to specify a single style for multiple elements here is the answer grouping elements for example I want to group h1 to h6 for a single style or else I want to apply a single style for all heading level elements h1 h2 h3 h4 h5 and h6 so here you can use commas the selector 1 comma selector 2 comma selector 3 likewise you can use any number of selectors so I'm going to start the syntax by using curly braces then comes your property the font family I'm going to give the value okay it's the first option and the second option I'm going to close it so it is called as a grouping element so grouping elements allows you to specify a single style for multiple selectors or multiple elements next comes class and ID selectors in addition to setting a style for HTML element CSS allows you to specify your own selectors called ID and class 
still now we are using only HTML elements as selector which is already defined with a style we are overriding this style by using the external cascading style sheet or we are overriding it by using by writing a separate style for it but the CSS allows you to create your own selectors called as class or ID let me see one by one ID the ID selector is used to specify a style for a single unique element if you want to specify a style for a single unique element you want to use ID the ID selector uses the ID attribute of HTML element and it is defined with a hash symbol whenever you want to define an ID selector it should start with hash symbol this symbol once again I repeat whenever you want to define an ID attribute or ID selector you want to use hash symbol the style rule below will be appear to element with ID equal to para1 so I'm going to use the user different tag ID so always starts with a symbol para1 then followed by text align that is a property value it's a property value so class the class selector is used to specify a style for a group of element that is a ID for single unique element it's a group of element unlike ID the class selector is most often used on several elements but in case of ID can be used for only for a single specific selector because for example an ID if you take any IDs ID cannot be in multiple it, it will be an unique for one person likewise if you are going to use ID it will be unique for a specific element but in case of class you can use this class for several elements this allows you to set a particular style of any HTML element with the same class the class selector uses the HTML class attribute and is defined with a dot symbol in case of ID will start with an hash symbol but in case of class will start with an dot symbol created the example below all HTML elements with class equal to center will be align center dot center is an user defined selector it's a class followed by curly braces open and close curly braces then comes your property value okay so here is the image what is the h1 selector it's a class or id can you able to guess it it's a class or id no it is an html element as this selector if it is a class it should start with a dot symbol if it is a id it should start with an ash symbol so this is nothing but this is an example for html element as selector so here is an example so open a notepad and type the following code so html and head inside the head you want to use the style tag style type is equal to text or css so this one is an id para1 text align center color red and style close i'm going to close the head and body i'm going to use p that is para id is equal to para1 i'm going to use the style hello world so this paragraph is not affected by this style so this paragraph is not because I'm not going to use this ID so I'm going to use this I'm going to type this in a notepad HTML head then followed by these styles I'm going to close the head tag and then comes your body in body I'm going to apply this style ID equal to para1 and this paragraph without this style I'm going to close it I'm going to run it so where you can able to see this paragraph is affected by CSS this is not affected by this style so this is an example for ID as in selector so next comes your class as selector the same you want to open a uh, notepad and you want to type the following code HTML head inside the head you want to define the style the style is a tag and you want to specify the type equal to text or CSS dot center so what is this this is nothing but a class anything which start with 
period or dot is called as a class and then comes your property value text align and value you want to close your style tag and head tag and body open your body tag h1 class equal to center i'm going to apply this style center align heading and i'm going to use the same for paragraph also because it is a class it's not an id so open your notepad and you type the following this html head and you want to apply the style tag and close your head and open the body tag and apply the styles and save it and you can run this so where we can able to see this style so the class selector as already we have discussed that a class selector can be used for any number of elements it's a reusable component that's why the name class and so you can open and uh, dot intro so you can use an any identifier then followed by curly braces it's a property value it's a property it's a property value you can close it and you can save it as dot css so so identify or a class what is the difference as we talked about identifier is specified only once a page as a higher in inheritance uh, specificity than a class because it's a unique and identifier is nothing but it's an unique or id is an unique but in case of class a class can be used several times a class is a reusable as many times as needed in a page as you said a class can be used any time but in case of identifier it can be used only for a specific element use identifier for main selection and sub selection of your documents and next comes the property and value the property is the style attribute you want to change each property has a value so what is a property the property is the style attribute what is it it's a style attribute you want to change and each property has a value and properties are separated from the respective values by colons and pairs are separated from each others by semicolons so here we can able to see what is this so this one is a property so what is this the color is a property so this font size and color is a property and blue and 12 px is a value so where the semicolon is nothing but properties are separated from respective values by semicolon so so this is a property and values property properties are separated from value by columns and um, pairs that is property value pair and this property value pairs are separated from each other by using semicolon and each css line that includes a property and value so where you can able to see in selector which which will be having property value so so this is a property colon value and between the properties we want to use semicolon so multiple declaration lines include the curly braces so you want to use the curly braces so whenever if you are starting any style you want to use opening curly braces at the end you want to use closing curly braces so curly braces the curly braces contains the properties of elements you want to manipulate and the values you want to change them to the curly braces plus their content is called the declaration block right so this is a curly brace and this is a curly brace so uh, the content along with the curly braces is called as a declaration block so where we can able to uh, see uh, applying a single style sheet to multiple documents for example you'll be having a multiple web pages where we can able to have a single style sheet which control the multiple web pages that is the key or main advantages of style sheet the style element fortunately there are mechanism in html to help in this situation the first we will consider the style so whenever you want to define a style 
it is not possible to define without style tag okay so it is possible if you want to define anything within the element it is possible so but html mechanism allows you to define a style by using the style tag the style element is always placed in the head element of an html document so be careful so where you want to write your script that is style you should write the style element should be placed within the head tag for example style type equal to text or css here within the style tag you want to define your style so h2 so element html element so property value so open a notepad and type style and type equal to text or css h2 color red so now open a notepad type the following code so you want to type this following code so we are going to apply the style tag so style type equal to text by css and we are going to define a style for paragraph p color red and text align center we are going to close the style tag so keep it in mind the style should be placed within the head section and open the body tag and we are going to apply the style this is a paragraph see we are defined the style we have not included anything we have just included the paragraph so we are not applied any class or id let me check so open a notepad you type html and you want to place always place the style sheet within the head section and then style type equal to text or css we are going to apply the style for paragraph tag color red text align center we are going to close the style sheet and in case of body open the uh, body section and then i am going to use the paragraph tag let me see what is going to happen i am going to run this see the styles will be applied how it will be applied see because we are going to redefine the style for paragraph tag using style tag commands so normally whenever you are going for any programming you want to give the commands for what you are using this so the commands are used to explain your code and may help you when you edit the source code at later date commands are ignored by browsers so the commands will be ignored you can add the command by enclosing them slash asterisk and asterisk slash the command can be can span several lines and the browser will ignore these lines example so whenever you use this command the browser will ignore this line so what is the use of command so it always a good programming you want to explain why you are using this by use of commands it will be very useful later on when you want to edit any web page so here is an example so html head so here is the command this is an example of how to use an id in a css web page so this line will be ignored by the web browser and i am going to write the style by using a style tag style type equal to text or css so what is this it's an id it's a para one text align center color red i am going to close the style tag head tag and i am going to open the body and i am going to apply the style paragraph id equal to para1 and for this paragraph no style is applied and save this as dot html and run this using a web browser so this is not processed by a web browser so where we can able to see the things so how many ways to define a style first one is a default style inline style embedded style sheet external style sheet so default provides values for all element properties unless you change it so default style whenever you are using any html element it will be having its own default style in line on the same line the style is defined as an attribute of the element in place within or inside 
the element we used to say is a in line on the same line use for one off or a special style embedded style sheet the styles defined in a head portion of a web page use this if you don't have uh, every many web pages or for a style that useful only for a given web page so embedded so this will be embedded within the same page so when to use this use this embedded style sheet if you want to apply the style only for a particular web page external style sheet so external style sheet it's separated from the content where it is going to have the central control so styles defined in a separate file use this to centralize the style definition and provide uniformity across all pages of a website so it's so an internal style sheet and example so we want to use a style tag so where we can able to see um it's an internal within the same all right so for a head within the inside the head title and you want to define your style style type equal text by css i'm going to define the style for the paragraph and you can apply this body section so embedded so html head and you want to define the style tag <coughs> and then selectors you can use any number of selectors and values and then you want to close your style head and html the style definitions go in a style elements in document head the selector determines the what elements the style rules will be applied to the style de definition separated by semicolon or enclosed inside the curly braces so here is an example so where we can able to see html head and title example page with an embedded styles so embedded within the we are going to define the styles within the head section so we are going to define for body font family color and for uh, h1 paragraph and order list so here is the example so html head so title example page with embedded style sheet and then you want to open the style tag style type equal to text or css then you want to define the style for body and for heading level h1 and for paragraph then for order list and close your style tag and head and then open the body tag i think i have uh, failed to close the body tag okay and where we are going to use the h1 and p1 and order list and save it close it and you can able to run it see so this is a way you want to apply it this is an example for embedded style sheet and inline style sheet is nothing but we are going to define the style within the same line or on the same say div within the same line inline inside this div we are going to define the style paragraph we are going to define the style within this so this is called as inline the first way is called this inline style sheet so an example for inline so where we are going to define for body see within the body tag we are going to define the style within the head tag we are going to define the style if it is the case it can be called as inline style sheet here is the example see within the body tag style equal to background blue and we are we are going to define the style what is h1 style equal to font word on a color white let me see so now the style is applied so this is an example for inline css and external so external we are going to have a separate file called as css which consists of style tag it may be in uh, so where we can able to see so first we are going to write open a notepad and you want to type style tag type equal to text or css then you want to define the property value the selector property value 
and close it and save the file name as file name dot css cascading style sheets and then you can include this style sheet in the html page by using this line is a link reference rel equal to style sheet type equal to text or css hyper reference you want to give the file name this is style.css this is an external style sheet so external style sheet is always a good to control all the web pages so here is the example for external web page so where we have defined the cascading style sheet so once again i repeat so this is a cascading style sheet what we define i'm going to include this so here so inside head you want to use link rel as a style sheet type equal to text css you want to give the location hyper reference and post it now i'm going to run this you see how the style is applied so this is an external style sheet i think you have enjoyed this video if you have any further queries please contact me at email kartik.me.vlrgmail.com or just log into my blog kartik.blogspot.in thanks for being with us thank you